In this video, we are going to talk about the ad hoc and defined port ranges, and we're going to talk about the smart port macros. Now, what are the port ranges? Let's take a look at that in our um, whiteboard here. So, imagine that I had a switch, and this switch had a large number of ports. Let's, for now, just say that I have these 10 ports here. And I wanted these 10 ports here that are on top to have configuration 1. Now, by configuration 1, I just mean a simple common set of configuration parameters. Let's say that they were uh, uh, access ports in VLAN 10, and the ports here below would have a configuration 2. How would I go about configuring these 10 ports? Well, I could configure them one by one. For example, doing something like this. So I'm going to go to the configure terminal, I'm going to say interface fast Ethernet 01, and I'm going to say switch port access VLAN 10, which is going to create the VLAN 10 and make a port 1 member of VLAN 1. Then I'm going to go to port number 2 and repeat the same command. And, sorry, small typo here. So then I'm going to go to fast Ethernet 04, I'm going to go to fast Ethernet 05, and so on. So now I have configured the uh, first 10 ports here to be in VLAN 10. But imagine that I had to do this for, let's say, 50 ports. How long time would this take me to do? Well, let's configure ports 6 to 10 to be in VLAN 20. I can do that easily with a very, very simple command that looks like this. Interface, range, fast Ethernet 06 to 10. So now, whatever configuration I type here, so let's first confirm that there is no configuration on these ports here. Any configuration that I configure here now applies to the range of ports that I have defined in my command. So if I do show run interface fast Ethernet 06, 7, 8, 9, I can actually see, and, and for 10, I can see that my switch port access VLAN 20 command has actually taken effect. Now, let's say that you have a range of ports that you are very often configuring. And instead of always typing these ranges uh, that, that you need, you can define a port range, name it, and later on just simply reference it by name and configure it instead of typing the range. So let's define a port range. So I'm going to say here, define interface range, and then I'm prompted to enter the name for this interface range. Let's call it uh, my ports. And here, what I have to do next is define the range of ports. Let's say that I want ports 11 to 15 here to be in this range. So now, instead of typing interface range fast Ethernet 011 to 15 every time, I can say interface range macro, and I can say my ports, and here if I say switch port access VLAN 30, if I do show run interface fast Ethernet 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, I can see here that my configuration has been applied to these ports that I have configured in a defined range. These were examples of an ad hoc range. Ad hoc range is when you simply uh, use the range or the interface range command or uh, predefined port ranges which are stored as interface range macros. But in both cases, these were simple examples because I had a consecutive list of ports, either from 1 to 5 or from 6 to 10 or from 11 to 15. But what if I wanted ports, let's say, um, from uh, 1 to 5, then 6, uh, sorry, and then from 10 to 15, and I wanted gigabit 0, 1, to be in the range. Can I use a single command to reference these ports? As it turns out, yes I can. This is going to look a little bit more complicated. So 
here I'm going to say interface range fast Ethernet 0 1 to 5 then I'm going to put comma and I'm going to say fast Ethernet 10 to 15 and I'm going to say gigabit 0 1 so now I have range that applies to these ports. Any configuration that I put in here, and let's put in the description here, will apply to those ports there. So I can see here that to ports 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, my description test has been applied, but 6 uh, to, uh, to 9 are not going to be affected and from 10 to 15 again I have description test in place and finally for gigabit 01 here I also have the description. So these were the port ranges. The next thing that I'm going to talk about are the smart port macros. What are these macros? Well imagine that you had configuration that you need to repeat and apply to multiple ports. In some cases you can use the port ranges and that simplifies configuration as we explained. Of course this helps only if you're configuring the ports at the same time. But imagine that you had to configure 10 ports today and you had to configure another 10 or 20 ports tomorrow and another 30 ports let's say in a couple of months with the exact same elaborate configuration. Wouldn't it be nice if you could store this configuration, this approved configuration, so to speak, on your switch and then just simply with a simple command tell your switch, okay, apply this configuration here that is specified. Well, this is pretty much what these smart port macros are. There are a couple of them that are predefined, that are already configured on the switches that you can use for simple configuration. Let me show you a couple of them. So going here to my uh, terminal, I'm on the cat switch here and I'm going to run the command show, uh, show parser macro brief. This is going to show me the list of macros that are predefined on the switch. Now don't do show running config because you won't see this with the show running config. But you can see which configurations will be applied using these macros if you take a look into more details of them. So let's take a look at the first one, the, the global macro called Cisco-global. So I'm going to say show parser macro name and then Cisco-global. So what I see here is that the configuration that is going to get applied is some error disabled configuration, this is happening in the global configuration. I'm going to have uh, redefined the uh, cost to DSCP map and this is usually done to map cost 5 to a uh, DSCP value of 46. Uh, we see that we are globally enabling the aggressive UDLD mode and then we are enabling rapid PVST loop guard and we are enabling the extended system ID for the spanning tree. There's really no need to do this because this is enabled by the default, but in, in any way, this is what this macro does. So if I want to apply all of these commands here, I'm just going to go in the global configuration here and I'm going to say macro global apply Cisco global. What switch did now is it applied all of these commands here that I configured uh, that, that were, sorry, predefined by the macro and if I do show run here, I should be seeing, for example, uh, this line here that tells me that this macro has been applied in this configuration. I can see that the aggressive UDLD has been configured and I can see the MLS map here configured, which is exactly what macro did. So this is an example of using a predefined macro but you can also create your own macros to use on the interface. Let's say here that we wanted to configure an interface or create a macro for the interface configuration that is going to enable the switch port on the interface, that is going to make interface an access port and make it an access port in VLAN 100. Let's create this macro. So here in the global configuration I'm going to say macro name let's call it test and I'm going to say switch port 
I'm going to say switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10, and then I'm going to end the macro configuration as I was instructed here by the iOS. If I do show run, what I'm going to see here at some point is the definition of this macro. I can see that there is a macro name test that implements these three commands here. So going to my interface, let's say fastitnet02, I'm just going to say macro apply test. What happens now is that this macro is now applied on the interface. I can do show run interface fastnet02 and I can see here that two commands show up. The switch port command is there by default. I just put it there in a case that we were configuring this on a layer 3 port. In that case, we would actually have to change it to the switch port to apply the other two commands. But I also see macro description test. This tells me as the user, so this highlighted line really has no effect, just tells me as the user that the macro has been used at some point on this interface to apply the configuration there. Now, this is again a simple macro, even though it was created by me. What if I wanted to create a macro that does pretty much the same thing except it allows me as the user to specify which VLAN to use. In other words, I don't want a macro for VLAN 10. I want macro for any VLAN that I as user specify. Well, that can also be done. Again, I'm going to go into the macro definition mode. So here I'm going to say macro name, let's call it test2. And I'm going to say switch port, switch port access VLAN. And then I'm just going to use a variable here dollar VLAN. And I'm going to say switch port mode access. You can see here that I've done another thing. I haven't typed full commands. I've typed the commands in their short form. If I do show run, this is exactly how these commands are going to show up in the running config. But these are still valid iOS commands. So now if I go to say fastnet 3 I'm going to say macro apply test2, and I'm going to say VLAN here, replace with value 100. And you can see here that it says access VLAN doesn't exist, creating VLAN 100. This is what iOS does when you put the uh, port into a particular VLAN and that VLAN doesn't exist, iOS is automatically going to create it for you. So if I take a look at the configuration of the fastitnet 3 now I can see that macro test 2 has been applied and I can see here that the switch port access VLAN 100 was entered instead of the variable that I have used. Switch macros are very, very powerful tools that you can use to make your configurations easier.